love what you do. I mean, there are many different characteristics and meanings to the word love, but there's something that you have to develop in your musicianship to bring love to the world. Right. So that's what it should be about first. Craig Holiday Haynes. I love it, Craig. Thank you so much for joining us. You know, I go back many years with your dad, you know, the great Roy Haynes, who just, who just changed drumming as, as we knew it then to what it is now, really. Right, right. right and true. the fact that you've carried on playing drums and honoring your father the way it is, is so great that you're here. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Tell me about music in the early days around the household and how music kind of entered your life and just what you experienced with your dad. When I was a kid, I was probably 9, 10, I had one of those little transistor radios. And my mother used to tell me, to scream at me, don't listen to that music, go to sleep, get up, you gotta go to school. And I was, could not stop listening to music. Nice. Now, meanwhile, during the day, my mother might be singing to a, a Cerevan on a record player, or Sinatra on a record, or you know, it could be anybody. Yeah. Uh, Miles. I was really more into pop as a kid, you know. Hmm. I was into R&B and Motown and early soul and rock. I really wanted to play, but I wasn't sure which instrument I wanted to play initially. <laughs> so well, when I really decided I wanted to be a musician was around the time the Beatles came out, I think, when I said, okay, I'm, I'm gonna be a musician. So I already had it in me because I had the love of it. So yeah. it was natural. I had piano lessons, I had accordion lessons, my first instrument in school was the French horn. You I had it in me. You were surrounded by musical, yeah, musical <laughs> influence, nice. I didn't want to play French horn, I wanted to play saxophone. So, seventh grade, went to junior high, got tenor sax. And the music teacher, I was majoring in music from that point on. And my homeroom teacher also played saxophone. But he was a really busy guy. He was doing a lot of stuff on the side, but he was, he was our junior high school music teacher. He was a teacher, homeroom class teacher. So. Yeah. so I had music from early on, and I kept at it. I started playing professionally at 14. My first gig, actually I wasn't allowed to go to my first gig. <laughs> so <laughs> I can't call it my first gig. <laughs> but we had been rehearsing, and my father didn't want, I don't know why, but. I wasn't allowed to go to my first gig. It's a little traumatizing. <laughs> but <Sure. laughs> but um, the band got to be a kind of sort of a hit. I was playing tenor sax and we were doing R and B, we do Chicago, Blood, Sweat and Tears, all yeah. kind of stuff. You know, we we played all the tri state area and battles of the bands and all that kind of stuff. It was it was a great time. Yeah. People kids I guess today don't know about Battles of the bands, that, you know. <laughs> at, that, at that time, and I was in many of them too, at that time in the 60s, there, there really was a lot of music going on. When the Beatles had come to America, there was the, this rush of everyone wanted to play music. There were tons of clubs, there were parties going on. And these Battle of the Bands were different bands that would come in and perform, and they'd win different prizes and right. whatever. That, yeah, right. and it was a very exciting right. time. It was an exciting yeah. time, yeah. We lost, you know, some love there because the interaction of music itself is great, but then the interaction of people being together, absolutely, you know, and dancing, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, and even just going to to listen to music, just right? Go, just to yeah, listen just to music, to, just to listen to it all, just. right? So you you sort of playing professionally, you're working around, you're you're you know, you have this music in the household. You, you, was your dad a touring or in and out? Or? He toured a lot, but he played in New York fairly often, and I would go to gigs and help him with the drums. I would just be the one setting up the drums usually. But I wasn't playing drums. Hmm. Actually, I take that back. I was when he was gone. I would have the snare drum <laughs> somewhere, that. just like yeah. pressing rolls. And you know, later on, I started really playing. One day, after a couple of years, my mother said to my father, "He said, you know, when you're not here, he's playing the drums." <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, oh yeah, okay. So I still wasn't a drummer though. I played saxophone until I started really getting bad grades in school. I was, I was really hanging out a lot and, you know, being the popular guy. Was, yeah. I don't know if you remember, you know Jamaica, Queens? You know? Queens, sure. So, yeah, you know, yeah. there, was a, there was a mall, the area, there was a Macy's, which is now a little mall area now. Absolutely. So there was a, a photo shop across the street from Macy's where a guy was a great photographer. And we did our band picture there and he put it in the window. 
So I got popular just from people, oh, hey, your picture's in the way, you're in that band. You know? <laughs> that so. was social media before there was social media. <laughs> That's right. In the window of the photography store. Good for you, man. Nice. <laughs> So, so you were listening to all different types of music at that time? All kinds of music. I mean, I loved Sinatra, I loved Hendrix, I loved Led Zeppelin, I loved Nancy Wilson, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, there was so much great music at that time. You mentioned Blood, Sweat and Tears in Chicago. Oh, yeah. Stevie Wonder had come out, Earth, Wind and oh, Fire. There yeah. were so Earth, many Wind bands. Oh, well, Earth, Wind and Fire came out. When the first album came, before the album came out, it came to the house in the mail. Hmm. And I used to take it around. I loved it. Yeah. There was nothing like it. The closest thing to it would have been Sly and the Family Stone. Absolutely. Yeah, so I would take it around to my friends, and nobody was ready for it. They said, yeah. "Dog, take that off." <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I knew it. it was. I was in love with it. And then later on, when they got to be a huge hit, and I bought some tickets, I took my mother to see Earth, Twenty Fire at the Garden. And I wound up meeting them after, and I thanked Maurice for sending the album to the house. Nice. I'm like, wow, thank you. That was, you know, I was like really touching. <laughs> He said, man, I had to send it. Your father was my idol. I had to send it to yeah. him. So. Mauricio White was a fantastic drummer. Yeah. Fantastic yeah. drummer, aside yeah. from being the singer and creator right. of Earthman and Fire. Right. right. Great, great drummer. And, right. and I heard him play drums many times, many years oh, ago. Yeah. yeah. He's on a lot of, lot of cuts, too. So, yeah. So here he is, tons of inspiration from your father. And he sent the album to the house. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So I was on top of them before they, anybody really knew. Yeah. It's like I was telling you, this is it. And said, people, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and how, how aware of contemporary band like Earth, Wind & Fire was your dad? Was he aware of the band and, and understood the, the music or was your yeah, dad? Yeah, yeah, he understood it and he, you know, he would sing some songs to, you know, yeah. he knew some lyrics and then, because like I said, he's big on lyrics. Yeah, he's yeah. Really, he's big on, he used to be really big on lyrics. So he, he knew the, the lyrics to many songs. Thousands of songs. He yeah. knows the lyrics to thousands of obscure songs that you and I don't even know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, on, right. If a song comes on the radio, he's singing the lyric before it comes up. It's like, yeah. wow. Well, I wonder if that, that it's probably interesting to see if that was a part of his, of his you know, drumming sound that he understood. I think, it, I think it, it does lend to giving a, a melodic concept and phrasing. Yeah. Because you, know, yeah. you can hear a little bit. People say I play melodically, but I hear you can if you listen to my father, you can hear the melody. You know. Absolutely. But he likes to play his own way, so he doesn't play the melody per se as you would recognize it. Right. So. Yeah, he totally has a sound of his own. You know, again, the the, the, the history and legacy of your dad, <laughs> of what he has done and what he continues to do, really, is a pretty amazing yeah, story a, in itself. Yeah. So you, totally. you start to play, you start to get involved now, becoming more professional, you're continuing on with your music? Well, we made some records, and uh, well, not our own records, we were backing up vocalists and, and you know, bands. I wound up backing up the Toys and uh, Benny King. You're working, you're doing yeah, it, you're in the, in the thick of it, yeah. Then wow. I started messing up in school, so I stopped playing, got my academics together. Mm -hmm. Then I decided I was going to play drums. So I told my father, I said, look, Dad, I want to start playing drums. He said, okay. Verbatim, he said, I'll give you a set of drums. I'm not going to take you by the hand. You, you have to get it the same way I got it. I said, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, which is not easy because he figured when he came up, music was really everywhere. Yeah. At yeah. this point, yeah. you know, music is fading out, disco is in, just coming in. In fact, he gave me a set of drums. Nine months later, I was touring. Playing drums. Playing drums. Fantastic. Yeah. Were you practicing at, at home, you know, on the drums before that time? Were you? Yeah, I did practice. Did you seek out any yeah. lessons? I didn't take drum lessons until another year later, maybe. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't actually, I didn't take, I had drum lessons in, later in, in, in college. Yeah. I went to Five Towns College. Oh, great. So yeah. I, was, I had percussion lessons there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I had already played music in school, so I played, but I didn't take drum lessons. I never actually took drum set lessons, hmm. now that I think about it. Never. You know, I studied with, with the great Charlie Persip in Jazzmobile, yeah. which was a great program for jazz. Charlie you know. Person, it's fantastic player <laughs> and teacher for sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that's great, great information. So you, you, you continued on, you're playing. What happened at that point? Uh, well, when I started playing drums, like I said, I started touring. Then I started getting in more into girls and I wound up being kind of, as Art Blakey told me, henpecked. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I wasn't working much. I got a day job and I was working and, you know, I just play gigs on the side. Which is not hard, <laughs> you know, it's really, you know, it's drenching, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's hard drenching. It's like, oh no. I decided I have to continue playing. Yeah. So I had already played with Sun Ra, which was a big highlight. 
I learned more from Sun Ra than probably any one musician. Hmm. This is a guy that played with and arranged for Fletcher Henderson, yeah. who Duke Ellington modeled his band after. Yeah. His musical sense was is genius. I've seen him change those intricate horn arrangements, just take everybody's chart and change the whole lines, just like that, and say, okay. <laughs> so I've seen him play Rachmaninoff for the groups of elite hmm. and just blow them away. So, whoa. He was so far ahead of his time. I mean, he was talking about NASA before the space age before NASA was yeah. in existence. You know, so, so he knew so much stuff that it was, <laughs> I was overwhelmed with the idea of music being able to change life hmm. and um, direct, you know, energies, which yeah. is an amazing thing. Yeah. yeah. Most people don't think about it, but I mean, we would play concert, we played the bottom line and play a whole concert for the bird, for the plants, <laughs> you know, dedicated to the plants. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like it was pretty deep stuff. In the yeah, process. yeah. So, it was, but right after, and right after I joined Sunra, I hadn't a chance to play with James Brown. Hmm. I was approached by his musical director to to join the band, playing drums. Playing drums. Was, was with, it at, with, at the time when there were two drummers in the band, or was it? There just... were two drummers, but usually it was one drummer. Usually it was Tony Cook. There were there were two drummers, but I don't know why there was usually just one playing hmm. when I saw him. Yeah. But I had seen him with two and three drummers. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Like Sun Ra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, with Sun Ra, I'll be playing different rhythm, different time signatures. With James Brown, everybody's in four. Yeah. Know? So I had the chance to go with him, but at the time I was getting into the spirituality and I didn't want to play commercial music. So I didn't, I stayed where I was and didn't go with James Brown, mm. which was, I wouldn't have learned as much, I don't think, about music and I don't yeah, think. Sometimes we make decisions, you know, in, in in the direction of what we have, but, but the fact that you were able to be with Sun Ra and, and learn what you learned was fantastic. Right, no doubt. So, is, now, so at, at the time, what was your dad doing around this time here? He, he, he was playing with Chick a lot, okay. and different from his own group. Yeah. He was about to go on tour with Chick, and I was about, I was off, we were getting ready to go do a tour with Sun Ra in Europe, and, and my father was going at the same time, around the time the festivals come up and they're really strong, especially back then. Yeah. He asked me to watch his house and said, well, you know, I got to go out with Sunrise. He said, no, you should quit that band. So <laughs> people would think you only play that kind of music. Now, by that kind of music means Sunrise was also known for the avant-garde. Yeah, yeah. So if you only know that part, but one of the other reasons I stayed with the band was the Downbeat magazine came out. And I believe it was the Reader's Poll. So I think the Critics' Poll comes out in the fall. Yeah. The Reader's Poll is the one I believe comes out in the spring. So, so the yeah. poll came out, whichever one it was. And I'm looking at the poll and I say, well, wait, Sunrise is number four for pianists and number two for electronics. And the band is over the Buddy Rich band and the Count Basie band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why would I go to James Brown? <laughs> yeah. Sunrise was huge at that time. I mean, it, was, it, was yeah. really, it was almost like experimental music to a certain degree. Oh, yeah. Was, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you're performing with the band and your dad's going out with Chick Corea doing his thing. He was, yeah, my dad was in a lot of different stuff. Right about that time, he was, he was touring a lot with Chick, so. And did, did you get a chance to go by and see your dad with Chick in some of these bands? And oh, yeah, incredible. That, that trio. Oh, actually, I saw him with Chick with the trio, with his own, with Chick playing with him, Chick with the quintet. You know, my nephew's playing with Chick now. And now, absolutely. <laughs> tell, me about, tell me about that, absolutely, yeah. Well, he, had, he came up with the same music teacher. Alan Styers, his name, in, junior, in Queens Village, yeah. junior high school. So my brother had the same music teacher as well. But Marcus was the last one. And when Marcus came home from school every day, he didn't do anything but practice. Yeah. He just throw his books down and just practice. It was like <laughs> eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> so that will show you what practice will do. And he's out now with Chick doing some dates. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you heard the band play with him with it? Yeah, it's great. Also with a trio and a couple of horns. Also, I heard him do something with Bobby McFerrin's son, Taylor McFerrin, and he does synthesizers, but he also sings. And so they did something with two keyboards, Chick and him and, yeah. and, and, and Marcus. It's yeah. a trio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Boy, to have that experience. I mean, listen, there's so much talent in the family. And Roy was out, you know, recently with Chick doing some dates and... I remember Chick saying that he was performing, they'd perform, and after the, the concerts, 
you know, Roy always knew where all the jam sessions were going on. He'd <laughs> grab Chick and then go out to these jam sessions mm. and play after their show. Mm. And Chick said it was hard to keep up with Roy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Roy yeah, says something. He, he's that driven in just playing and, and, yeah. and really, you know, seeking to learn more and, mm. and grow more. Mm -hmm. What qualities did you notice out of your dad that, that were qualities that you learned from? To stay sharp. <laughs> I mean, he's known as his, his oh, absolutely. you know, that touch. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's a lot to even just touching the drum, so it's, yeah. it's... And he knows tunes. I mean, it's just the amount of tunes he oh, knows. Oh, yeah, and the lyrics to the And tunes. the lyrics and the form. <laughs> and I mean, yeah, he really is that well-schooled yeah. from the history of what he did. Right. Hearing, like, playing with people like Charlie Parker, mm. Lusty Young, Charlie Parker, and, and then they'd take a break and... Art Tatum would play during the break. Yeah. And imagine all the hearing, and that's so much music to hear. From great <laughs> artists. I mean, Art Tatum, who was an incredible stride, you know, piano incredible. player. Incredible. And Oscar Peterson, as a young kid, used to go by and listen to Art Tatum so mm. he can learn from Art Tatum. Mm. Charlie Parker. So the fact that your dad was in the thick of that. In the thick of it. Right. To have that <laughs> level of creating geniuses. <laughs> right, playing. right. And so he was right in the middle of it all. Right. That's incredible osmosis. <laughs> what you're going to learn from that, I'm sure, was amazing. I mean, and just yourself, yeah. even just being around, hearing your dad play and the level of musicianship that he's always been around with, you're right. it kind of like now it goes to the next generation. You're right. So yeah. do you feel now that you're still, you're still open to absorbing different types of music now? Oh, sure. Lately, I've been doing a lot of stuff in Berlin, which, and I was led there by the, the people that are doing the TV show I was telling you about. So, now, this, and this, this is the... Stir TV. Stir TV. Tell me about what that is. It's a show where they invite people. They're usually prominent people, producers or movie makers or dancers, choreographers or musicians yeah. to present some of what they like. Mm -hmm. Generally, it's five videos that you want to present or it could be a work of art that you did or were a part of or something that you want to present. Yeah. They present it and that's one episode. Mm -hmm. So um, I, was, I was asked to do the narration, I, and I introduce everybody. Yeah. So I just do the voiceovers for it, you know, to Great. introduce the people. How fantastic. I'm going to have to <laughs> check that out and, yeah. and have all the listeners check that out too, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, cool. it's a cool show, actually. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, it's not, I don't know why they're not filming right now, but, but I did one episode myself. You check it out. I mean, I just presented some stuff I thought was cool, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll definitely check it out, for sure. <laughs> you know, it's kind of interesting because... With the influence of, of, you know, even your middle name is Holiday. Uh, yeah, that's another th story. Growing up as a kid, I didn't like my middle name. And I used to chastise my mother and say, why would you name me? She sings sad music and blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to be a drug addict now. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it was like one day, right about the same time I decided to play the drum, right around the same time, it was almost like something that she just slapped me and just like, I could listen to her 24-7 now. Interesting. 24-7, I could yeah. listen. The amount of music and, and the texture and, and the phrasings and, and passion mm. in the music. Yeah. It's like, I mean, Frank Sinatra said she was the best singer he ever heard. Absolutely, <laughs> I mean, absolutely. So did, did you, had your dad played with her? He played with her, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was ironic, he played with her. Um, there's a recording, I had a recording, a, a vinyl, and I loaned somebody, I never saw it again. They did a, a concert at the Newport Jazz Festival, mm. 19, it was the year she, where before she died, 1958, I think? Mm. She died in 59. Mm. Yeah, so another thing is, I was named after her, obviously, yeah. but my mother's next child, my sister, was born the day that she died. Mm. So it was kind of, kind of weird thing, so it was yeah. kind of spooky. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, fate sometimes <laughs> plays a hand yeah. in, in, in the, the journey of our lives, for sure. <laughs> right. That's right. amazing. You know, we have a lot of young students that, that watch these interviews and, and, and look for information on certain people and discover certain personalities, as they will with yourself. And, and, you, and you, your dad, you know, still, as he gets older now, he's still, you know, playing and active and just still pushing yeah. the modern drum set performance forward. Yeah. That's it's amazing, amazing to see. That's amazing. And these young students are out here, they're listening. In closing, what would you say, Craig, to this next generation of musicians that are looking to pursue their dreams, that want to go out there and play music, what advice would you give them? First of all, love what you do. I mean, there are many different characteristics and meanings to the word love, but there's yeah. something that you have to develop in your musicianship 
to bring love to the world. Right. So that's what it should be about first. Mm -hmm. Listen to the people that did it already. And if you can, try to associate yourself with one of those people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that is the key. Somebody, you can find one person that you admire, who, is, who does well at what you want to do and what they did. Just get with that person, mm -hmm. if you can, and just try to absorb everything, help them do whatever, to get as much knowledge from them as you can. So seek out the past generations. There's some great wisdom out there. And then keep creating yourself, too, because that's one thing we all should do. We should be creating hmm. something. So if you, you know, you're playing some music, you're creating some, some energy, <laughs> that's the key. <laughs> that's a, an absolutely wonderful key. And I'll tell you something, <laughs> Craig, you are absolutely carrying on that creative process. Your dad you know, set it in motion. Mm. You know, mm. Roy Haynes is a name that really is just, is just synonymous with creativity and, and jazz drumming at a very, very high level. Mm. So on behalf of the Artist Series, we thank you so much for coming by and oh. sharing this with us. My well, best to you, you. my Thanks best to your dad me. and your family. And thank you, and keep on doing what you're doing. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so, so much. Thanks for having me.